Hey, Juanita, I think you're muted. <laughs> I just told Brent I had such an eventful day. This is going to be a great session. Maybe I should unmute myself. Good evening, everyone. We are live with my amazing brother and friend, Brent Stone. How are you, Brent? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Juanita. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine, thank you. Rolling with the punches, of course, getting things done. And, you know, uh, it's, it's one day at a time. I, I don't know what your life philosophy is, but I found that one day at a time works very well for me sometimes. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> now, for those people in the audience that are not acquainted with you yet, I'm going to read your bio. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to go into a healthy and edifying conversation about what you do, who you are, and how you are impacting the world. So I'm just going to go over to your bio and uh, read from there. I was reading through it today, and I also went on your website. And I would also like to discuss a few concepts on your website because I found sure. the way that you structured it was just amazing. Sure. Yeah, whatever you want. That sounds great. Fantastic. We'll have fun. <laughs> we'll have fun as always. So uh, your bio says the following, Brent Stone has achieved success across multiple industries in his 20s and early 30s. At age 19 and after only 18 short months, he became one of the youngest people to reach the top 1% of one of the largest network marketing companies in the world. Since leaving the network marketing industry, he has invested in multiple passive income streams, allowing his family to live a life of financial freedom. Brent embodies an attitude of serving others and helping them achieve their goals. His boutique connecting agency, Stone Co. LLC, helps people by turning active income into passive income through various vehicles and connections. Brent Stone loves people and more importantly, helping them to break free of trading their life for money. And I love that last sentence because I feel often people become slaves to what they do simply because we live in systems that we have to adhere to now. To the audience, I yeah. had the privilege of meeting Brent at the um, BLN Entrepreneurial Summit. And he was a phenomenal speaker there. And I want to touch on your presentation there a little bit later. And sure. we also had the privilege to be together on the business panel. And the other night, last week, you spoke on wealth tactics at the BLN uh, meeting. And you yes. also you said so many uh, pivotal things there that I actually quoted you in my podcast this afternoon. So thank you for that because I learned a lot. <laughs> that's that's the that's so awesome. I, I I'm, I'm humbled. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Now, I want to ask you, now, before we dive into what you do, we sure. want to know Brent Stone. Who is Brent Stone and where does he come from and what does he believe in? So that's uh, <clears throat> that's good. So who is Brent Stone? So I, I'll tell you where, I, where I've come from and, and, all, and all of that, what I believe in. So I currently reside in Virginia in the, in the U.S., and I am about an hour and 40 minutes southwest of Washington, D.C. So on the western side of the state, I'm married. I have two kids, a two-year-old and a three-month-old. And I'm really excited about just optimizing uh, family time as much as I can. And uh, obviously, um, I'm passionate about helping other people do the same. Um, my my where I come from is actually kind of funny and it kind of weaves into why I'm passionate about what I am passionate about because I started my first business in the network marketing industry uh, back in 2006 and I was 18 years old just turned 18 I was still in high school actually and I wanted to prove that I could do something and I wasn't the most academically inclined I had friends that were brilliant uh, very, very book smart. I just knew that that wasn't going to be my trajectory. Um, now I'm very self-educated, if, if you will. I, I, I'm an avid reader. Uh, I, I love studying sales psychology, leadership, um, anything in the Christian inspiration section. I, I devour mm -hmm. pretty quick. Um, but but there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there that I really am attracted to. Yeah. And a lot of it's around the the marketing thought process and helping people to um, 
basically get noticed. And there's a lot, there's a lot there, but it all stems around being able to help people kind of put their businesses on autopilot or their, their, their money on autopilot. So they can focus on the things that are, that are most important in life. And too many people make money, the most important thing. I call it the golden handcuffs. And, um, what I believe is that there's, there's, there, there are more things important than money, but the uh, flip side of the coin is that if you don't have the money part figured out, then it's yes. hard to see other things for the value that they bring to your life. And too many people live their life and let it pass by um, without taking the appropriate time to quote unquote, smell the roses <laughs> and, yes. you know, watch their kids grow up and, and all the other things. So, um, I, I am a firm believer that, you know, if we can serve people throughout our life and get them closer to, um, you know, the, the relationships that matter most to them, then, then everything else will, they'll be good. And, you know, the world will more than likely become a better place. <laughs> so many people are so concerned <laughs> and rightfully so they're concerned about where their next paycheck is going to come from. And, you know, people have to eat, people have to, you know, pay rent, people have to do things. So, uh, my heart goes out to them. Um, very specifically, my heart goes out to new entrepreneurs because a lot of people, they get into this space where, they have this idea and they think, Hey, making money is going to be easy if I just go with my brilliant idea. And then they get into launching that idea and they realize it's quite hard. <laughs> it I've had conversations with people lately. I, I own multiple businesses. One of my newest ventures is, is, is capital lending for entrepreneurs. Um, whether you're in business for 20 years or you're, you know, you just got started this month and, um, my back end clearing house, they've funded almost a billion dollars or so in the last decade. So there's really not a project or too small. We, there was a land development deal that was just done with one of the people I'm, I'm partnered up with out of California. They did $1.4 billion land development deal. So we can get funding for just about any size project that somebody would want to do. But what, where I'm going with this is that when I got started in business, I know what it's like for banks not to want to even talk to me. I know what it's like to have, you know, the, the non-sufficient fund charge pop up multiple times in a month because I'm, I'm trying to build my business and I'd rather put gas in my car than put food on my table because I understand the long-term vision. And that's how I was at 18, 19, uh, even 20 years old. I was trying to figure it out. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that are trying to figure it out. My, my goal would be to take the edge off uh, and the sting out of some of the lessons they're going to have to learn um, because I think if we can give them, you know, basically the platform where they can kind of stand on our shoulders of all the, th you know, they can basically start from where we got to, <laughs> we can help people go that much further. Um, yeah. if we tell them the lessons that we learned the hard way and yes. that would be something that I would love to be able to get known for is being able to, um, not, not for the sake of it being known, but for the sake of, um, being able to help other people through the things that I struggled with as an, as a young entrepreneur. You know, every time that you speak, that you present, or that we, you know, talk, engage into conversation, there's something that pops into my mind. And that's the fact that you are passionate about empowering people, especially entrepreneurs. And I love the fact that you mentioned you want to show them and help them pass those obstacles that we faced when we started. You're going to help them skip many steps that we had to climb the hard way, you know, trial and error. And the other thing that popped up, you know, you mentioned book smart. People that are book smart, that's fabulous. But it doesn't always mean that they make great entrepreneurs or business people or that they are adaptable. Because yeah. I noticed something in COVID. There were lots of businesses that closed down because yeah. people were more book smart than they were. I don't want to, maybe for the lack of a better phrase, street smart. And sure. other businesses scaled and they grew in the COVID. How's that possible? What's your view on that? Oh, I've got an easy answer for that. I was, um, <clears throat> one of my audio books I was listening to within the last two or three days um, talked about, I want to say it was Alex Hormozzi's $100 million offers. He, he talks about, uh, I think it was him. It was either him or maybe a Russell Brunson quote, <laughs> which those guys are friends and they, they talk a lot. So I'm sure it's probably, probably one of them and they've probably stolen it from each other, but talking about your, your, your ability to learn and typically the higher educated somebody is not in all cases, because you know, you could have 
for PhDs and you're, and you're watching this, um, somewhere and I'm not, I might not be talking to you, but, but there, there's some, there's a lot of people. And I know one of my businesses is in healthcare. I work, I've worked with a lot of doctors over the years. You know, I've seen this trait often, typically people that are higher educated, their, their openness to learning. It, there's like a, if you were going to rate it on a scale of like zero to 10, they would be on like a one or a zero because they feel like they, they're, they've, they've spent, you know, they've yeah. paid their dues, so to speak, educating themselves through undergrad, postgrad, medical school, uh, their specialty school, uh, their, their, uh, you know, they go to the hospital and they, they do, you know, they, 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 all the experience they have to do as, you know, basically like in training and it's just the residency. That's the word I was looking for the, the residency and all, all these things. And it's hard for people to open up to the fact that, you know what, maybe I don't know everything. And it's sad because, um, in our society specifically, a lot of people are like, yeah, well, attorneys and doctors are the, the wealthiest in our society. And that's just, it's just not true. Uh, entrepreneurs are, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, I, the, I have, I have met some doctors and attorneys that, that are incredibly wealthy, but they're also entrepreneurs inside of their vertical. <laughs> yes. They're not, they're not, they're not employees and it's not any, and I don't have anything wrong with, you know, against yeah. you know, people that are there. Work. It's not that at all. It's just, I'm talking about their, their openness to wanting to learn. And typically the higher educated somebody is, it's harder for them to, maybe it's just like lower ego or something like that, just to be like, you know what, how, what can this person teach me? You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I've had 15 years of postgraduate education, you know, what is this person going to teach me? And it's like, it's not about that. Um, there's just, you know, it's about, you know, talking to people that are fruit on the tree. And, uh, that that's where a lot of people don't have the street smarts. As you, you said, you know, they don't have the street smarts to maybe see that very clearly and therefore mm-hmm. cost them financially. I mean, people can have all the degrees they want, but that doesn't, that, you know, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> I, no. I mean, you get what I'm saying. I mean, of course, it's going to be more money per hour but if you're scaling wealth and other things unless you're you know cash flow engineering which is one of my things i mean that's what I'm, another thing i'd like to be known for um i'm actually in the process of of trademarking that right now and uh, that that phrase and the whole idea is about engineering one's finances in a way to where they can replace what they do actively with passive income at a younger age than retirement and um anyway so i go on these rabbit trails forgive me I'll let you, I'll let you take, take it away. I love it. As you are, uh, you know, sewing out those golden nuggets, I'm catching them here in my mind and I'm thinking back, you know, I, I was in the ministry for 15 years and of course there are doctors and professors. I started, studied up to master's level, but uh, you know, I found, and I love academics. I've emceed a lot of academics event in my life, events in my life, but I really have found spaces where there are uh, academics that have studied up to doctor or professional, uh, professor level. And they, when they get into a space where they have to have a normal conversation with normal people that, you know, talk about daily things, they are unable to do so because they, they are really just uh, speaking in a certain linguistic fashion at work. Then they go home and, of course, they teach their students. And I think it's very important in all areas of life that we stay on top of all the developments, what's happening, you know, uh, socially, what's happening economically, what's happening in the political space. Yes, also in the academic space, but just to zone in on one. That's what makes some people uh, less adaptable. So I love what you said there, and you're definitely not just an entrepreneur. You are a serial entrepreneur because you've got a lot going on and you are juggling all those moving parts. So tell us about your business. What are the different uh, sides to your business that you have put in place and uh, the, so that we can learn more about Stone Co.? Sure, sure. I <clears throat> I won't go into detail on everything just because I don't want to dominate our time with things that um, – don't, don't make sense for the, the typical listener, but we, we have a healthcare corporation. <clears throat> uh, that that's probably the most I'll say about that. My, my, well, here's what I will say. My wife is very smart and she actually created the blueprint for this corporation. Um, <laughs> in under 10 minutes back in 2016 for, 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 for me. And so like, this is something we should do. And, and we did it and it has been phenomenal. And she's, been the oper- been been in charge of the operations absolutely you know uh, coo of everything and just 
totally ran with it and has made it what it is. And uh, there's little things that I've done along the way, but at her direction, you know, telling me, hey, we need to do this. And, you know, I this is my skill set so I can execute this. And it's a small percentage of the overall picture. But there's a lot there. And then we have um, my background is in marketing and advertising. I spent f- almost 15 years in the network marketing space, but then also almost a decade in the advertising space. And I wrote advertising uh, <laughs> strategies for large beer manufacturing companies that you would absolutely know the names of um, college athletics, uh, inst- you know, college institutions, university institutions. Um, I've done ad strategies for l- very large companies, very small companies, everything in between at a local level. Um, interstate level, uh, digital ads, programmatic display. So, uh, in 2021, I actually started my own advertising and software company with a business partner and that has grown and evolved. And, you know, we actually, I just got a text, um, two days ago from my business partner. He's, I'm more of a CEO role. He's the COO role in that. And he texted me and he says, Hey, figure you should, you should, you should know, um, we've collected more, in the basically the first quarter of this year than we did all last year. And wow. I was like, wow, that's really awesome. <clears throat> and I, I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really interesting. He, he is incredible and he's kind of done some product development for us and he's more on my technical side. And we just started a whole new program where we're actually doing lead gen. I never thought I'd be in the lead gen space after stopping my network marketing uh, endeavors. And he's got this proprietary system that he's, developed. And I actually, I don't want him to tell me because I've got so many other friends that are kind of in, I don't want to say the same yeah, space, exactly. spaces. I don't want to be, I don't want them to try to guilt me into telling them our secret sauce. Yeah. And so, uh, I've told Glenn, don't, don't share with me how you do this stuff. Cause we got so many testimonials. In like the last, <laughs> I mean, the last two weeks, it's been, it's been like one, one, one client in particular, we created 140 leads for them in two weeks. My goodness, that's phenomenal! Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's incredible. And, and then we have oh, software. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. He, he. We have oh, software. Really? We, we, we leverage AI within our, our, our very robust CRM platform that he's helped to build out with developers yeah. and other things. We've been able to uh, basically automate a lot of the things that we do. And there's a lot of human components to what we do as well. And we've contracted people to help us with doing a lot of the lead gen. So we actually use people. A lot of it just isn't, you know, like bots and stuff like that. We actually use use people on that end of it. But he's he's like he's it. putting it together and he's quarterbacking that stuff. It's pretty awesome. And then our, our software side is our other big division now. We've poured a lot of our time and energy into that. I, I when we launched Funnel Force, it was basically, you know, programmatic display ads all the way because my background was in advertising sales for a long time yes. and writing the ad strategies and some of those things. But we've, we'll still take those clients on, but it, it's now it's almost like we got to charge a retainer to talk to people and we got like, <laughs> hey, do you really want us to do your ads? Cause it's going to be expensive. And we try to almost discourage people from wanting to use us for that now. We're, we're so focused on the other areas. Um, yeah. And then there's Stone Co. So Stone Co. is kind of my umbrella for some of my advertising, some of my income automation stuff. Definitely it houses the whole cash flow engineering uh, program that I'm developing right now. I'm actually in the process of building out um, a couple of different courses. And the first two courses that are going to be built out and will be released have to do with uh, basically just teaching LLC basics. Um, I have a lot, a lot of different companies ranging from S Corps to we have... Uh, there, there's a lot of different th- variations of how you can write up an LLC, different types mm-hmm. of LLCs, but then there's different types. You know, you've got C-Corps, you've got PLCs, you've got uh, different types of limited partnership. And there's ways you can structure these things and contract these things. So what I'm, what I'm actually going to do for people that were in my position back when I was 18 years old who knew nothing and didn't know even where to find this stuff, I'm going to put together an LLC basics course, and then I'm going to sell it for like under 20 bucks. I mean, I'm going to mm-hmm. sell it for, I mean, it's going to, it's going to be literal. it's going to be super, super cheap. And, you get this. My avatar for this course Tell was an me. executive for a mega, 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 huge. I, I yeah. don't think I should say the name, but it's a huge nonprofit globally. And wow. and she was an executive there for 10 years. And she's helping me build this out because she she just, long story short, she's incredible. Um, I, I, she, she's, cl- she's close with my wife and I. I, I, that's all I'll say right now. I'm sure I'll get her on camera and she'll maybe do some testimonial stuff for me here in the future, but she's going to talk about this and I'm going to use yeah. this as more of a lead magnet to bring people in so I can get their email addresses because honestly, the course is going to be worth to them. I mean, I, she, she makes 
very good income. So for me to save 10 hours of her time with her trying to start up her own LLC is worth thousands of dollars to someone like her. So that's what I'm marketing to. I'm going to basically sell a course that's worth, you know, thousand, two thousand dollars and it's going to sell for 20 bucks. I'm going to ask basically for people's name and email addresses just so I can just market to them some of my other things just so they can get to know me. I can provide some value. And then um, I'm, I'm looking to do um, some other things with cash flow engineering. There's going to be cash flow engineering one on one. We're going to talk about someone's just starting a business and it correlates with the LLC because you know, now someone's an entrepreneur and they're licensed. It, it, it links right in so I can teach them, hey, how do you budget with the business? How do you, you know, so for example, when my wife and I, we first got married married. Yeah. We did the whole Dave Ramsey thing because I had debt. Now it wasn't consumer debt. It was business debt, but we paid off the debt that I accumulated. She was, she's awesome. She's really smart. She didn't really bring debt to the, to the equation, but I was, I, I was not, you know, I had no problem spending money on building business. So I, I had business debt. We used the whole Dave Ramsey process to, you know, get rid of, get rid of that. Well, what's interesting is that he markets that product really well to a large percentage of the population that isn't, an, they're not entrepreneurs. And so you can leverage debt to build wealth. And in fact, um, one of my other products that I'm launching, essentially, I'll explain this here in a little bit, is going to be with this individual. But my, my, my friend from childhood, Derek, he actually went from a negative net worth. I mean, I don't think I'm saying anything that he wouldn't say, but basically he told me this on the phone the other day. He's like, man, I don't know if you remember this. I was actually in the negative in 2019. Well, his, his commercial real estate portfolios absolutely valued like, I mean, like nine figures. I mean, it's insane. Oh it's just, just bonkers in the like he's 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 absolutely one of the top authorities in the country in a certain asset mm -hmm. class in commercial real estate. And so we're yeah. gonna work on putting a fund together that's um, basically for accredited investors. And part of my value ladder is I'm trying to farm. And it, I'm actually it, it works out in my benefit. But what I'm trying yeah. to do is I'm trying to help people become successful yes. and give them the tools to become successful. And yes. if I can then get them to the spots where they're making over three hundred thousand dollars a year for two years in a row, I can help them file accredited paperwork, then they can invest in my fund <laughs> where we can guarantee them, you know, win -win. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's a, it's a win, win, win all along the way. And then, and there's other things, there's other tools and things that I've invested in other businesses here in the last couple of years with my wife, we've, we've bought up a couple other e-commerce type of businesses in the Amazon space. And that has proven to be really awesome and a really great way to take people that are maybe getting traction in just the budgeting area and they've got some extra cash to invest, not hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they've got some money to invest. I can teach them how to leverage that to make, you know, 25 to 35 plus percent returns on a monthly basis, which is way better than they're going to get if they just stick that thing in a savings account or the market for crying out loud. You know what I mean? I mean, this, I'm talking like real returns. And then not only that, they're going to be able to more than likely 10 to 20 X their investment after like two to four years. So they could rinse and repeat, or they can just sell the the business that they, they have basically built for them in the automation system. So, <laughs> yeah, and and then they're just able to they're able to go and invest in other things. And again, hopefully they'll come and find me for the, the real estate fund. But even if they don't, I still help them accomplish some really big goals. Yes. And that's the whole thing. And that's where there's going to be a lot of fulfillment for me because in network marketing, we wanted to see people get debt free and develop passive income. Mm -hmm. And now um, leveraging more profitable vehicles, in my opinion, I mean, network marketing is awesome and I'm an advocate for it, especially if you don't have capital to invest up front to start a business. But um, it's hard to make a lot mm -hmm. of money quickly in, yes. in that business because the margins are just structured differently. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. just, there's some stuff there. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry. I, again, I'm going into the, yeah, no, I'm, so <laughs> you know, I'm thinking to myself, you are, as you are empowering people, you are teaching them all the skills and the tactics and the tools that you've learned and yeah. you help them to find a way to scale like you are scaling because you yep. are scaling constantly, you and your wife with your business and your partner, and you are really touching on a lot of uh, spheres of the business world, of having a business, of being an entrepreneur, and who would want to invest in a certain old way and have those lapses in time, have those lapses in the market, go on the roller coaster. If you can go with Stone, go with Brent and his wife and his partner, and do that faster because the faster we do something 
you know, and, and this is a knowledgeable space. This is a space that has been researched over years and years of building up experience, knowledge, knowledge, uh, you know, and going at it daily, going to Stone Co and starting that uh, because there's a lot to be done. You know, Brent, I think the thing about entrepreneurs that I love the most is the passion and the enthusiasm that they have for what they do. And, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's just evident. I see that uh, in, in the fields that we move, you know, the speaking that we hear, the events that we attend. What's, what's your view on that? What is the driving force behind the entrepreneurs in general if you, if you would have to think, you know, about a concept, for instance? Well, it's funny that you ask that because most of the time when I talk to an entrepreneur, because of some particular struggle they had personally, they now turn that into a business to go and help other people like themselves. And I think that that's the driving motivator for a lot of entrepreneurs is that they, they go through something that basically is just painful. I mean, honestly, it's painful. And they're just like, you know what, I can monetize this. And in the process, I can serve the world. And yeah, because here's the thing. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you just want to, you know, monetize, you know, pain. And it's like, no, it's not even that at all. It's like, hey, look, I'm, I've am i got to find something to do to feed my family for the rest of my life, yes. right? I may as, may, may as well, you know, go ahead and do it and doing something that I know very well. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, I can deliver way more value than what I charge. And even if there's certain products or services that I have that seem expensive to some people relatively, um, the value that's delivered on the back end is just so large. And it, or the companies I can connect them with even because Stoneco is built as a conduit for me to connect people with these other people that I've done business with over the years. I've spent lots of time and money trying to figure out what, what people I can trust and not trust. Yes, and uh, there's a lot of, good decisions I've made and, and uh, decisions I found out to be bad decisions, but that's okay because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for all of it because now uh, I, I know where to send people. <laughs> so yes. yeah, to answer your question, no, we do, we do. yeah, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur motivation comes from the pain that they, in my opinion, yes. it comes from the pain they experienced when they were either getting started or just earlier in life. And they're trying to figure out how they can help other people walk through that pain and, and come out victorious. Absolutely. I believe there's always purpose in that pain. I agree with you. And it's really our mission, you know, as entrepreneurs, not to just be successful because that's what we want. We, we want to be successful. We want to give our families a better life and enjoy life at the same time. You yeah. know, as you've mentioned, but we also want to help other people because we have a heart for community and, uh, you know, leadership here at Meticulous is very important. Gratitude is important. Community upliftment. And I really see all of those uh, factors and those themes uh, coming out uh, through your life, your business, what you're doing with your family. Um, you know, leadership is, is very important in society. And I believe that entrepreneurs play a very big role in that. I don't think people realize how we really uh, influence as a whole. You know, groups that we belong to, BLM, CLA, Underdog Millionaire, those groups that have leaders in place that lead other leaders that build the communities. It's making a massive impact out there. And I'm, I'm not always sure if people realize uh, that entrepreneurs have a pivotal role in society. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's interesting, <clears throat> you know, entrepreneurs, they're the ones that are willing to, you know, <laughs> work a hundred hours a week for themselves. So they don't have to work 40 hours a week for someone else, <laughs> but in the process of figuring out, you know, how to get the time balance back into the right proportion after the first, you know, startup phase, the first portion of their business, then that they start hiring people and they start creating jobs in their local communities. And I think that so many people overlook that and they're just like, oh, you know, th these people, you know, he, you know, so-and-so bought a new Lamborghini and it's like, yeah, well, so-and-so created 150 jobs in your local town. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's just <laughs> initially when he was funding everything on credit, he didn't buy the Lamborghini. He was no. driving <laughs> the 10 year old vehicle, you know, it's like <laughs> you know, people just, it's so wild to me how people like miss this. And it's like, honestly, yes. the entrepreneurs are the self most selfless people yes. because they'll go without while they're paying their staff and these other things. And I know my wife and I, we've been in scenarios where we've, 
with no money coming into the business have had to meet payroll and other things. And what do you know, I, it's funny, but like, how do people think that that happens? Well, you dip into your personal money and then you put it into the business. And it's like, the, you know, thankfully it's like, you know, as time goes on, you figure out some of that stuff, but I mean, it's tough. Like there's, there's, there's times where you, you learn things the hard way. And that's why some of the most successful people have been through the most pain. So that's the truth. That's the truth. And I don't think people, you know, as you described, see behind the scenes. Like yeah. you said, they see the success. They don't see the late nights. They don't see the early mornings. They don't see the personal sacrifices. They don't see sometimes the stress that business owners go through when they're taking a big risk, you know, taking that chance, believing in that move or that strategy until it pans out and then everything looks good. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, but I have to tell you, entrepreneurs have very, very strong mindsets. They roll with the punches and they do what needs to be done. And uh, I, I sat in the BLN presentation uh, in St. Louis when you were there. I was sitting next to Jose Escobar, our friend, and you presented on a product that you have. And I remember taking my pen and writing on a piece of paper, this is an excellent sustainable business model. Would you like to talk about that? I know there's an investment of $50,000, but talk to the audience about that because that's a phenomenal product that you presented on right there. Oh, sure. And, you know, when I was talking in St. Louis, I was trying to give some hypothetical examples of actually like uh, investment price points. So with what I w had mentioned in St. Louis, talking about some of the e-commerce space with the Amazon stores, typically what ends up happening is that when, when people investigate the space, they, they start to initially think, <clears throat> this seems kind of, kind of extreme because a lot of the people marketing this, it's it's turned into its own industry in itself, where people can actually charge a lot of money and set up people in, in like an Amazon or a Shopify or a Walmart store, you know, some type of uh, store like that. Well. <clears throat> I chose Amazon. Um, I've actually, this, my wife and I have, have done this now for a little while. And what I've found out is that in the Amazon space, it's just easier if you're more of an investor role, because most people, when I was talking in St. Louis, I was assuming, you know, most people as an investor, they'd want to stay in their genius, their, 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 their lane of, you know, what, what drives them emotionally and, you know, monetarily in their, in their business. And they just want to use this as an investment vehicle. There's absolutely a lot of money to be made. Um, a lot more money to be made if you're going to pilot this yourself and be the solopreneur, so to speak, in the space. But most people don't want to buy a job. So what I talked about with my product is the automated side, you know, starting an automated Amazon store through another company that handles all of these things in an automated fashion. And they basically roll out the white carpet and put on, you know, white gloves and they, they take care of their investors and they, they do this type of thing. And they work with the store owners so that the store owner is quote unquote involved, but I mean, how much, how much, how involved do you really want to be if you're an investor? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, not even silent. I mean, I, I, you know, like for example, like when they, when they were getting my, my products and we have three brands now and six different products yeah. and a couple different things. And basically when they were bringing this stuff through us, it yeah. was Hey, do you agree with this? This is our data. You know, these things have sold really well, you know, based upon these metrics and other things. I mean, they're not real glamorous things. I mean, one of our brands is called Possibilities and, and we sell like dog fur, you know, like things oh, that like, get fur off of your clothes. And then we have a dog car seat. And oh. It's, it's really neat. And so I, I'm in the process now. I'm talking to a couple um, like Instagram influencers that that run like dog adoption uh, agencies and whatnot. And they're like, oh, absolutely. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to people about the product and they're quality products. And I'm just trying to like, you know, get the brand exposure out there. And then we have products that are like, um, garden products. So infinite home solutions, we have like water sprinklers and hose splitters and garden hoses and stuff like that. And you know, it's just thing, thing, you know, yeah. things aren't glamorous, but they, they sell and we can, we can that make a good quality awesome. product and we can make a lot of money on the product and people are thrilled and they come in like really nice packages and the, the boxes are, I'm, I'm surprised, you know, the, 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 the level of quality of this company that I utilize, um, they're, they're phenomenal. I've used other companies and, um, it's just not the same. The, these guys have really done a good job of basically, um, they take their, their portion of, 
of the profits because they have skin in the game. And, and that's good. In my opinion, a lot of people are, you know, I don't want to say a lot of people are greedy, but, but too greedy, but it's like, Hey, if, if someone's going to handle like 99% of the headache, they should get entitled. to upside. Yeah. So, you know, we pay them a percentage, they run everything and it's automated and, you know, we, we keep, you know, 70% of the profit, they keep 30 and it's, it's, it's a good split. You know, we invest on the front end and they take it and they run with it. And, um, you know, if Amazon needs to talk to the owner, I can be available, but that like rarely ever happens if at all. So it's, it's just one of these things that it's a really interesting place to be. And it allows us to, you know, we can invest more and we can start more stores or we can add products into the brands and, yes. um, we can, we can, we can make really good money on it and sell them. And it's, it's a cool thing. Well, you know, I'm thinking uh, that's like saying, hello, entrepreneurs, here's your business on a silver platter. You oh, make yeah. This investment. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You just passively make income. It's automated. I mean, who would not jump at that chance to do that? So contact Brent at Stone Co. Because I, the moment I heard about that, that's why I wrote the note to Jose. I said this. It's a sustainable business model. And and you, you mentioned something. You can scale from there. You can open more stores from there. Yeah. So, and you add products into your existing ones. Yeah. 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 How many how many do you run at the moment? How many did you open at the moment? We've we've opened up three to date. Um, so, so we're, we're actually, we've already been in talks about it. I talked to my wife about it last evening. Um, she, she's looking to do a store with one of her, um, one of her friends and they're going to, they're going to do a store together and have some products and, and we may end up adding a couple more products to our existing stores that we have over the course of this year. And, um, I've got another friend that has been talking to me about wanting to do a store. And so I might end up doing a store with a buddy this year. And that's something else that I can do too. Like people are like, Oh, well, if it's, if it's $60,000, hundred thousand dollars, whatever the case is, I don't know if I can afford that, but here, here's what, here, you know, you know, what's really funny. If this is the analogy I give people. If I could sell you a Ferrari for $30,000, and you didn't have a dime to your name, you'd probably find thirty thousand dollars by 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 yes. dinner time to buy the Ferrari because you know the value you could turn around and sell it for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars all day long. So you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna make one hundred and twenty thousand dollars if you yeah. can just find thirty. And so that's that's kind of what this is like. You know, if 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 I can explain somebody, hey, these are the returns you're gonna make monthly. If I can if I can show you how you can make twenty five to fifty thousand dollars a month gross in an Amazon store. And by the way, your profit's going to be, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 a month. I mean, that's, that's a really good thing. And most people just, you know, th they'll find the money. And now, and now if somebody wants to go in with a friend, I can teach them how to do that. Like I can, I've, I've done, I've done some of these deals now and I've brokered some of these agreements. I, I know how these agreements, what they look like, and I can help walk people through that process. I love that. And I'm thinking to myself, I mentioned that you are scaling in all the dis different spheres. You're giving them this opportunity you yeah. know, to, to learn how to do this business. They can open more businesses after the investment and growing the first one. They can open up. And you also uh, give them that, that strategy on how to start, even if they want to partner with someone else. And you're also moving into the financing space now. So it's a whole compilation of services. Uh, it's a go-to place to be because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that maybe they have that money to invest and they're not sure how to invest it or where, or what type of business oh, to start. Yes. The world is changing, guys. This is an opportunity because it's, it's a contemporary. Uh, everything is moving in that direction. Life has changed a lot and you guys are staying upbeat with all the developments. And making this possible for people, how wonderful is that? We're, we're trying hard. And you know, it's funny, <clears throat> I can't even take credit for a lot of how this has come together. I have friends in real estate and a lot of, some of my friends in the financial industry had told me about how some realtors are actually suggesting to their clients that they should start some of these Amazon type stores, or I, let me put it like this, e-commerce based stores so that they can have another uh, revenue stream for a couple years so they can basically qualify for more funding or get better loans or whatever. And it's just, and also have an, another stream of revenue outside of their profession. And I'm like, wait, I could help them do the exact same thing. And then they could 
invest in other products and services and I can introduce them to other people because now they're entrepreneur. Maybe they weren't before. Cause this isn't, again, this is not just for entrepreneurs. Like if somebody is a high paid professional or if somebody just has, they've been saving for a long time and they want to invest in something that can give them a very high return on a monthly basis. And then they can sell it in two to four years and, you know, five X, 20 X their money. I mean, that's, that's a really great place to be. So I could introduce them to the right people. And yeah, it, it's something that would be really cool because then I can get them into the entrepreneurial space and then start stretching the thought process and, and then getting them excited about, Oh, wow. Well, this is actually working. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is working. Even. see you, you're an entrepreneur and you didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we build society. You're building society. <laughs> You know, and I, you, it, is, it really applies to anybody out there that wants to change their lives. Maybe they dream of being an entrepreneur, like you said. You know, you're breeding entrepreneurs here, left, right, and center. Uh, you know, helping, empowering people, uplifting them. Maybe they're starting out and they're young and they want to do that. Like when we were young and we, you know, younger and we wanted to do that. Maybe yeah. they are in a situation where they just cannot do their nine to five job anymore. They want to look for a way out to start getting that passive income so they really want so they can do what they love. That's an option. What about people who have worked for 40 years for the same company? They're nearing retirement. They have this money. They're not sure where to invest it further. They're not sure what to do after they retire. There's an option. There's no age. Uh, related to this project, this project works, this system works. And if you're up there and you want to try it, why not? I mean, take that risk and, and look at it and ask the questions you want to uh, uh, you know, ask, but it's been proven to work and it's there and it's available. So yeah, who would really need you to just take it? <laughs> we, we've helped people at different age ranges and different background professions. This is not a uh, um, non-entrepreneurs. Uh, is what I'm referring to. We've, we've helped people in their fifties, thirties, um, do this, um, that, that don't have other businesses already. So yeah, it's absolutely possible. It's possible. Now I also want to talk about, you know, and we've, we've been through that there. I've been through many disappointments in business, like in my early sure. years. And I, I love to tell people about it because I want to help them not to make the same mistakes. We talked about helping people miss a few steps and helping them to really scale quicker I always tell people I want them not to walk up the steps. I want them to have a trampoline by the time we're done because they must feel like they're just scaling, you know. <laughs> so I want to ask you, what was one of the disappointments in your early years when you started out as, a, as an entrepreneur? What was one of your disappointments and how did you, uh, you know, navigate through that? Maybe there's someone in the audience that's sitting in a situation where they've been disappointed and they're not sure what to do next or how to feel or how to digest the situation, what would your advice be? You know, I've, I've had a lot of disappointing things happen in entrepreneurship <laughs> over the years, but one of the, one of the first things um, that I had to hit head on when I was 18 years old is that after I get into a, a business where I, you have to talk to people, I, I realized very quickly that I was scared to talk to people, especially about things that I weren't, I was not uh, versed in. And mm -hmm. That was, it was terrifying, debilitating almost. And I spent hours daily trying to just get up the courage to go and just walk up and talk to people. And, and, um, there's the, I'm sure there's even people around my hometown that can, you know, attest to, you know, the, the <laughs> almost, I was a weirdo just walking around local stores, just trying to network, meet people before, like, you know, networking was like an acceptable thing. It was just like, I was the, you know, person walking around just talking to everybody. Oh yeah. And, and, and mind you, I was scared to death in the beginning, but I just forced myself to do it all the time because what better way to get over fear is than to address it head on. Um, there's other things that I've been through with disappointed from senior leadership and various things and whatnot. And here's what I can tell you. Every setback, whether it comes from circumstances outside of your control or within your control, um, are, 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 uh, you can, you can, you can, get over those humps. You can get over those, those speed bumps, so to speak. Um, you just have to be able to, you know, reprogram your mind to have an open mind. Yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and entrepreneurs, and you, uh, I, I'm sure you'll agree with me. We are very thick skinned. We get to become very thick skinned. We get to a place where we stop uh, taking things personally. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Someone asked me the other day, I think it was in an interview that asked me, what's my superpower? 
And I said, my superpower is I never take offense. I never take things personally. Because the moment I internalize that, my whole focus is all over the place. And now I'm just focusing on the wrong thing. I don't take things personally. I just move on and we let bygones be bygones. We agree to disagree and still love people and treat them with dignity. In my opinion, that's the best thing to do. Yeah. No, totally agree 100%. I think that's so, uh, it's such a beautiful depiction of how people should be in general. Like, don't take offense. I mean, uh, most of the time when people are mean to us anyway, it's not really even a personal thing. It's just they're having a very bad day. And I think as entrepreneurs, you get to see people in a different light. Um, in the beginning, it's almost like a bad light because it, it seems like everyone doesn't want to hear from you. But then over time, you start to realize it's when people are actually rude, it's, it's, it's not because of you. It's because they're dealing with something else. And it's just, you know, being, um, you just catch the brunt of it basically. And I think a lot of people, once they start to understand that they can be more gracious towards society and start to realize that people are, in, are inherently good. It's just, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you just deal with the, sometimes you, you deal with the brunt of people's bad days. Yeah. And so to you forget. Yeah. We should put ourselves in their shoes. Oh yeah. We don't know what they're going through at home. You know, I saw in the ministry in the church, uh, cause I did a lot of counseling with people, spiritual counseling over the years. You, you see them at church, but you also see their lives behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And the moment that you that you realize what they are facing, and they were business owners, and they were entrepreneurs, and they were academics, and they were you know people that had nine to five general jobs that they loved and enjoyed, they all had something that they were dealing with. And we yes. really have to have compassion on people. And and I know you have compassion on people, and I know that you are doing good out there in the world. And uh, you know leadership is a very strong trait of yours and your wife's and your business. And uh, I want you to tell us a little bit more about your family. Tell us about your wife and your children. You're such a beautiful family unit. And I know where you live is just so, so, so picturesque. Tell us more about that. And what's your plans with your family here on Forward for the Year? And how can we support you in the business? Because, you know, when you're in business with your spouse, your family is in the business with you. And uh, we want to support you as a family and as a business and in a, as an entrepreneur. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, my, my family is <clears throat> so special uh, to me, obviously, which, of course, you know, I'm biased. But, um, my wife and I, we actually met technically through um, one of my first businesses. Uh, I, I was I actually met through through a job that I had at the time back um, in my early twenties, and then we didn't talk for about a year or so. But then we got reintroduced through um, through my networking business, and just there's there's a lot there to unpack. But essentially, we we started dating, and I could see that she was really ambitious with you know all of her her work ethic and everything that she you know she had, and um, and we just really connected well on that, and. We, we got married and we actually didn't have kids for a long time. And we just, we, we have a two year old now and we were coming up on our 10 year anniversary. Wow. And, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, he's awesome. He's, he's yeah. so full of energy. I mean, all the time he is jumping, bouncing, climbing things. And yeah. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, well, all boys are like that. And uh, out of, out of the uh, wide diverse group of friends that we have i most yeah. most of them will say andrews and on another level and so that's <laughs> he's he is he's 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 making it happen yeah <laughs> whatever <laughs> to do, make it happen. and then we have a have a newborn a three-month-old little, little girl that we're really really enamored with and she's so, honestly she's so easy compared to andrew <laughs> The second child always is. The second child is always so much easier. Yeah. Oh man. And that that you know that's that would be coming from Michelle, not just me saying that. I mean, it's just it's really, yeah. it's really refreshing. Um, you know, but but you know, Andrew, he's his own. He's his own bundle of joy i mean he's you know we still you know obviously yeah. love him so much and i i'm you know as soon as we get done with this call i'm getting ready to go hang out with him and yeah. run around and 
I, I don't, I don't work as much anymore. Um, part of, part of, you know, actually the year, all of 2020, I basically took the whole year off, um, just okay. to spend time with Michelle and kind of recalibrate what I was going to do. Cause that's when I shut down my network marketing, um, pursuits and basically, hit the restart button on, on all of the, the things that I was going to dedicate, you know, the lying share of my time to, because for me, network marketing was, was my career path until that, you know, I made the decision to shut that down. And then, um, so I just took a year off basically. And then 2021 started funnel force with the, with my business partner, Glenn, and, uh, decided to, to rebrand stone co in the process. And so, and then, you know, we, when I did that, Michelle was like, you know, don't start work before nine o'clock and please be done by four. And I was like, okay, yeah. I, can, I can do that. And so yeah. now you know, I kind of work between those parameters. A lot of, a lot of days it's, you know, I get to 10, um, but then I get done usually by four o'clock and then, um, yeah. So I'm my, and the goal is to eventually cut that down to less and less and less. But I, I do feel called to help people with what I'm doing through Stone Co. And I do believe that Glenn and I have some really cool services now, especially Glenn just developed a, a really awesome coaching program for, um, I, I, I did the foundation for the local um, sales protocol. Yeah. But he, he's doing it from like the fulfillment side and the technical side. So we can actually teach uh, a, a business person that wants to either start a local digital agency, how they yeah. can make six to seven figures within 24 to 36 months and um, on like reoccurring on a reoccurring basis. And so that's something that we're actually in the process of just marketing. Now we actually, we turn, we turned the ads on for that. Like two days ago, we've already got like four leads that are like, yeah, we want to do this. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> We're, we're, we're really blessed. We're fortunate that, you know, this stuff's like really just starting off quickly. Um, it's not like the success came quickly, but now it's like, we've learned a couple of things and every time we implement something now, it's like, it seems like it takes off, but nobody saw the, the grind on the front end, you know, or, or in the early years. But, um, yeah, so Michelle, she's, she, she takes care of the family from day to day, just to answer your question about uh, her and she will help basically just help our management team. Cause we put a management team in place back in, um, 2019, uh, 2020 essentially. So the goal was, is once we had kids, she would not go, you know, basically be part of the office and she, and we've held true to that. She hasn't had to really go in unless it's training like a, a new member of her management team or something like that. And <clears throat> that's, that's where we want things. Um, yeah, just spend more time with the family. And part of the whole cash flow engineering thing is how can I teach not only what I've done, but in the purpose of being able to help other people have more of control over their, their day-to-day stuff. And we travel um, quite a bit, not, not with a newborn, but we travel quite a bit. So on a horizon, we've got some things where we're going to be running around and seeing family and that's, that's in the next future. So yeah, on the family front. That's what on the family front, on the business front, it's all intertwined. And I, I know you just showed the world that work-life balance is possible. And you're even in the space where you can help them for it to ring true as well. Yeah. So I'm going to encourage the audience to reach out to Brent, get him on a call, and visit the social media platforms that is in the, that are in the description here of this live. And continue to cheer him on and continue to network every single day. Networking is super important. If Brent didn't network so successfully, he wouldn't have met his wife. You see, it started in the early years. He already started networking there and then he met his beautiful wife and they have a beautiful, beautiful family today. So I want to say thank you, Brent, for spending this time with us today. And go and enjoy that time with your son. You know, it's so important. The early years go by so fast. (laughs) Yes. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. Uh, you know, I, you know, I've been just trying to learn, you know, more, you know, ever since St. Louis met so many incredible people out there. And obviously you're, you're part of that. We spoke on that business panel together and we were so impressed by everything that you shared and the wisdom. And, you know, I'm so grateful to be able to have met you and now call you a friend. So thank you, Juanita, for everything and excited to uh, continue conversations into the future. So let me know if I can do anything too for, for you guys. Thank you so much, Brent. I appreciate your meticulous moments, community. Reach out to Brent, network with him, and do business. The time is time is you know waiting for no one. You want to make every day effective. He's going to help you. 
to capitalize on your time and to grow a business and have a good life. It is a possibility and the balance is there as well. So we'll see you again, Brent. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Hey, thank you so much. You too. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're the number one fastest growing community and tribe of some of the highest level entrepreneurs all around the country and around the world. We're in 36 states across the U.S., in 11 international countries, and over 240 plus members growing every single day. And I'm honored, excited, and I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm proud to be the official sponsor of the Meticulous Moments podcast with Juanita Cap. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm excited for this journey. Hello, my name is Jonathan Ellis. I'm from the Thought Provoking Change community. I am honored and humbled to be a sponsor of the Meticulous Moments podcast brought to you by the one and only Juanita Cap. It is such a joy and privilege to be on this journey with you. And I look forward to seeing where it takes not only Meticulous Moments, but also thought-provoking change. Looking forward to this partnership. You're a great person with a great podcast. Hey, everybody. My name is Patrick Rude. I'm the owner of Rude Financial Services, a proud sponsor of the Meticulous Moments podcast, uh, hosted and directed by the beautiful, strong, and intelligent Juanita Cap. I cannot tell you enough about what this woman has done with this podcast and the effect that she has had on me and all of the other sponsors and people that listen. Don't miss it.